Hi, I'm Stephanie Cho, and I'm here to talk to you about vasomotor rhinitis, its presentation, diagnosis, and management. Vasomotor rhinitis is one of the many causes of sinonasal symptoms. Its consideration is key in proper patient management because it is often confused with other diagnoses. It presents with the typical symptoms of rhinitis, including congestion and rhinorrhea. However, inflammation is not a crucial part of its pathogenesis. There's no history of sensitization to inhalant allergens. There's no clinical evidence of sinonasal infection. It is a diagnosis of exclusion but it is one of the most common forms of non-allergic rhinitis. It is also known as idiopathic rhinitis, non-allergic rhinopathy, and non-allergic non-infectious rhinitis. Its pathophysiology is not fully understood. There are neurosensory abnormalities in the nasal mucosa affecting the regulation of the epithelial, glandular, and vascular processes. It is a neurogenic pathway involving the efferent portion of the autonomic nervous system, resulting in either parasympathetic hyperreactivity or sympathetic hyporeactivity is a disorder of the non-adrenergic, non-cholinergic, or peptidergic neural system. This sensory nerve fibers uh, involved contain the neuropeptides, including vasoactive intestinal peptide, substance P, and calcitonin gene-related peptide. When the nociceptive receptors are stimulated, these neuropeptides are locally released from unmyelinated sensory C fibers of the trigeminal nerve. This results in stimulation of mucosa and symptoms associated with vasor, vasomotor rhinitis. The stimuli itself may be inflammatory mediators or inhaled irritants. There is strong evidence to show that the nociceptive TRPV1 substance P signaling pathway may be upregulated in these patients. The TRPV1 receptor is also known as the capsaicin receptor, which we will refer to later. The nasomucosal nerve supply is rather vast, as mentioned, and we can break it down into these parts. There's sensory with contribu contributions from B1 and B2 and nociceptive sensory nerves, which influence the trigeminal response as mentioned. The parasympathetic nerve supply travels with the cranial nerve seven to join the deep protrusal nerve in the video nerve Vidian nerve to synapse in the sphenopalatine ganglion. There are also sympathetic fibers, which synapse in the superior cervical ganglion, whose post ganglionic fibers also join the deep protosal nerve to form, to form part of the Vidian nerve and affect the vasculature. This is illustrated in this drawing here, in which the left side of the screen illustrates the parasympathetics and the right side of the screen shows the sympathetics. Joining the deep protrusal, both joining in the deep protrusal nerve and heading 
in making up the Vidian nerve. The differential diagnosis of vasomotor rhinitis is vast. You can see here that there are many potential local and, and inflammatory causes, including, as mentioned, inhalant allergies, rhinosinusitis, infectious and occupational rhinitis, atrophic rhinitis, illicit drug use, as well as senile rhinitis and gustatory rhinitis. There can be systemic causes for cyanonasal symptoms. Uh, pregnancy is well known. Cyclical changes uh, occurring during menstruation can also be associated with nasal symptoms. Uh, hormonal changes, can all, other hormonal changes can also be associated with uh, cyanonasal symptoms as well as vasculitides and autoimmune disorders. There are many medications associated with cyanonasal symptoms, which we must keep in mind. We're quite familiar with the topical de decongestants calling, causing rhinitis medicamentosa. Antihypertensives and cardiac medications can uh, affect the nasal mucosa, as well as urologic medications. Antidepressants and psychotropic agents are also known to affect the cyanonasal cavities. And you can see a small list, uh, a short list of the vast number of medications that can affect the nose um, and must be kept, kept in mind before we diagnose basal motor rhinitis. Many of them affect uh, the vasculature, as listed on the left side of the screen. And then there are also various hormones, psychotropic agents, as well as the NSAIDs and aspirins, which we are very familiar with. Chronic rhinitis as a whole is nicely illustrated in this uh, diagram from the position paper at the European Academy of Allergy and uh, Clinical Immunology um, published in 2017. Again, you can see that chronic rhinitis can be broken up to broken up into infectious rhinitis, allergic rhinitis, and non-allergic, non-infectious rhinitis. Again, you can see that idiopathic or vasomotor rhinitis makes up 50% of those patients with non-allergic rhinitis. We all know that there also can be anatomic causes such as septal deviation and turbinate hypertrophy, as well as functional nasal deformities that are part of the differential diagnosis for cyanonasal symptoms. We also cannot forget tumors uh, and associated potential CSF leak. In the presentation, as we take patient's history, we need to make sure we take a very detailed history. Um, it, this usually occurs in adults. As mentioned, we review their medications and medical history very closely. The presentation is usually a runny nose um, with or without post-nasal drip, cough, or congestion. Nasal hyperreactivity may also be associated with this with sneezing and again, uh, irritation causing rhinorrhea. The timing can vary and triggers may or may not be present as listed here. We always do a complete workup, including nasal endoscopy. You do want to evaluate them for allergies with an inhalant allergen testing. 
um, and imaging may be obtained at the discretion of the provider. Again, we have to remember to evaluate for CSF rhinorrhea. Its management is multi-layered. Uh, the biggest portion of this involves patient education, as most people, patients will present complaining of sinus or allergies. And it, it behooves you to let them know that there are many other reasons for sinonasal symptoms, including basomotor rhinitis. They should avoid triggers. Uh, they should be aware that this can be an overlapping cause with other forms of rhinitis, such as allergies. Uh, but they can have significant runny nose um, and triggers despite treatment for those symptoms. Pharmacotherapy includes topical nasal steroids, antihistamines, and anticholinergics. In this drawing from the European Academy of Allergy and Clinical Immunology, this is nicely broken down. Looking at senile rhinitis, um, using ipratropium to treat that, gustatory, and occupational rhinitis of all avoidance. Hormone-induced rhinitis can be, can be improved with the use of nasal steroids. And again, drug-induced rhinitis can be uh, improved with avoidance. At the bottom here, you see neuro, uh, idiopathic rhinitis. Uh, and nasal corticosteroids and capsaicin are potential treatments. For more information on topical capsaicin, I draw you to, uh, I implore you to look at this uh, articles by this group out of Belgium, Van Gerven and Hellings um, et al. have studied this uh, intensively. Um, and have good evidence to show that topical capsaicin can work and improve um, the symptoms associated with idiopathic rhinitis. In the United States, there are no FDA approved um, medications uh, containing capsaicin for this treatment. However, this is intensely studied um, in this group, as, as well as a few others, have looked at this and have shown good response to low-dose topical capsaicin. In the United States, I know that Amber Luong has also studied this and is currently uh, uh, has ongoing studies. With regard to surgery, uh, there are a few techniques we can do. We're all familiar with inferior turbinate reduction and how that can uh, be associated with decreased rhinorrhea as well as a septoplasty. Vidianorectomy is a well-known uh, surgery, but can be associated with dry eye and palatal numbness given the global treatment of the vidian nerve. More targeted therapies recently, including endoscopic approaches to the posterior nasal nerve and um, cryotherapy have proven successful. Posterior nasal neurectomy involves uh, transnasal endoscopic surgery uh, targeting this nerve as it exits the pterygoid palatine fossa at the sphenopalatine foramen at the posterior aspect of the middle meatus, which you can see illustrated here in this diagram um, from 
the non-allergic rhinitis chapter in Cummings in the 2021 edition. Diagram A shows the anatomic location. Diagram B shows the nerve uh, dissected out and exposed and ready for uh, neurectomy. Photograph C actually illustrates our next point with cryoablation. This involves a handheld device that is single use and is currently uh, provided by the Stryker Corporation out of Kalamazoo, Michigan. It uses nitrous oxide and freezes the local mucosa to minus 20 degrees centigrade that reaches a depth of approximately three millimeters. Controlled studies have showed that this provides good results. Remember the key points that this is a diagnosis of exclusion. However, you cannot forget to evaluate for other causes of sinonasal symptoms as illustrated in this presentation. Patient education and shared decision-making are key. Uh, we usually begin with medical therapy, including uh, nasal sprays. There are surgical options, including inferior turbinate reduction, which have been historically performed, but there are other newer surgical options with endoscopic posterior nasal nerve neurectomy and uh, cryotherapy. Thank you for your time. I recommend, I recommend these um, articles and chapter of Cummings uh, to learn more about non-allergic rhinitis and also vasomotor and idiopathic rhinitis. These are additional sources I used in putting this presentation together.